have my finished hallway drawing, let's add some color in this hallway. So I've already painted the shark, now I'm going to get some of my other details. I like to start with details first, and I like to start on the left hand side, because I'm right handed, I don't want to put my hand in any uh, wet paint. So I'm going to get this little sucker shark down here, they like to hang out with the big sharks. My tiger shark is pretty much done, I'll probably come back to it way later and finish out any details. My angelfish I'll need to look up a photo of before I add any color. Um, these other guys, I know what they look like. So next I'm going to add some color to the tank. Um, eventually I want this to be kind of a blue-green tank. So I'm going to get the blue undertones first. Now I probably should have done a wet on wet with this so I don't have any crisp lines. But hindsight is always 2020, as they say. So I'm getting a crisp line around the edge, and then I'm going to go back and try to smooth it out. Apologies. So we're smoothing it out with just water. Um, and I did catch it just early enough. I don't have a horrible line. Um, now, I forgot these fins, so I'm going to paint those real quick before I finish my wash. And now I'm going to bring it down, being really, really careful not to touch the edges of any of my shapes because they are still wet and I don't want those colors to run together. I want to keep my crisp edges on my shark fins and my little friend down there. So I remember that wet on wet technique. I added the water and then I added a drop of the blue. I let it spread, jump to another area, and then continue just pulling that paint around. So, as I'm getting into those edges, they're still damp. I have to be really careful that I'm not touching the edge. So, even though you can't see it on the camera, there is a very small white edge around it, like a border. And since my, um, sorry, the sunfish, I just forgot the name of it. But since it's not painted, it's dry, I can paint all the way up to the edge of that fish. Angelfish, that's what it is, my bad. So we're going to finish getting in these blue undertones and then we're going to start on the rest of the wall. Now as I painted I noticed something weird happening. There must have been some type of baby oil under the paper because I have this weird spot that won't go away now. So definitely double check that your table is clean. So I'm doing a yellow orange for the tile on the wall. The tiles on the wall in the hallway do have just a slight yellow tint because of the lights uh, from up above. So I'm just going to exaggerate that a little bit uh, for my painting. Now my walrus, I want to have fun with too. So I'm going to use purple or violet for the undertones. And I am adding more color in areas that should have shadow, like under his head and the tusks. The tusks, I want to remain white as long as possible. So again, anywhere I have the shadows, I'm keeping it a little bit darker. All right, my walrus is done. I'm going to paint the wall. Everything else around it is dry at this point. I'm going for a yellow green this time. And just like the yellow orange, I started with the orange and then yellow on top. Here I'm starting with the green and then I'll add yellow on top. So I'm trying to get that undertone a little bit in the paper first before I get the overtone. So the undertone is the green, the overtone is the yellow. And I'm just kind of blending it together on the paper. And I noticed the same thing happened here. Um, I've got a weird spot at the top. So there must be something on the table underneath it that soaked through the paper. So now the right hand side I'm going to jump to and do the same thing. I'm going to start with that yellow green. So again, undertone green. I'm going to add that first and then uh, being very careful for those small areas, keep it clean. Now I'm going to add yellow. Keep in mind, this is sped up. In real life, I do not paint this fast. 
you should be painting very slowly. Really take your time, keep everything clean. And I want the tones to match, so I washed and patted dry my paintbrush and like this. And I'm going to lift some of that paint back up. Much better. Now I'm going to get the tile. So just like with the water in the tank, I have to be really careful that I'm not going to get anything um, edge to edge where I've already painted. I don't want my colors to run together. So I got my wet on wet, now I'm adding in the orange. Yellow on top. Now I did pull way too much yellow this time. So I am going to start to pull it into the pillar a little bit. But I started to overwork that large area. I painted over it too many times. The paper is starting to wrinkle a little bit too much and I don't want it to tear. So I'm going to leave it alone for just a minute before I go back to it. I'm going to get the other pillars slow pull down. Add a little more orange. So I got a little dot of orange there and then I'm going to mix a yellow orange and I'm kind of just pulling it down. I am going to blot this again because it's too dark. So those little details at the end of the hallway, a little tricky, but if you take your time, you use just the end of the paintbrush, you'll do great. Another thing to keep in mind is going to be where the light is, where I should have my shadows. So I'll go back to that later to add those kind of details. For now, I'm going to leave it with just a wash. We're going to move back to the fish tank. Water, if it looks natural, should have just a little bit of a green tint to it. It should not be just straight blue. So I'm adding an extra green wash to it using a little bit of wet on wet technique. Everything is dry now, so I can get all the way up to the edge of all of my objects. And anywhere in the tank I want to be darker, I am going to go back with more blue, so it's still a darker blue-green. Sprinkle some salt where it's still a little wet, so I get some sparkly water. Now, for my walrus, walruses typically are kind of a tan or a brown, um, and I'm going to mix my own color because I did violet undertones. I still want it to be more of a cool color instead of brown. So I'm mixing more of a grayish tone using purple, blue, and green. And as I apply it to my, wal my walrus, I'm looking at a photo. I have to know what it really looks like. So I'm adding in shadows where they are supposed to be. I'm blending them out just a little bit so it's not a hard shadow. And as that dries, I'm going to go back and add in the wrinkles for the details. So this is how I kind of make my walrus a little bit more gray, but I still keep it in the color scheme that I chose for my hallway. And if you haven't noticed yet, my color scheme is yellow green, yellow orange, I have some blue green, and some violet, but I'm not getting into the reds. So I'm looking at a photo to get the wrinkles in the right spot on all of his little flippers and his bin. And 
And the fins on a walrus are kind of like a mermaid tail. So redefining that area around the face and in the neck. Right now he's squashed down. They also have these really fuzzy uh, mouth areas around the tusks. So this part was a little tricky for me. Not all walruses have a lot of fuzz here, and some do. So I'm adding in a little bit more purple to make sure it looks dark, kind of like a little beard. And they do kind of have like an eyebrow bone, so you do see that a little bit. Done for now.